We're going to look at the 2021 AP Chemistry FRQ question number six. A student is studying the properties of calcium sulfate and lead sulfate. And I've grabbed a couple of pictures of those two chemicals from the internet. The student has samples of both compounds, which are white powders. A, the student tests the electrical conductivity of each solid and observes that neither solid conducts electricity. Describe the structures of the solids that account for their inability to conduct electricity. Well, these solids are made up of ions, but these ions are stuck right next to each other with Coulombic attractions, positive and negatives attract. And so the idea that this solid has ions that cannot move. So ions cannot move with respect to each other. And that's the reason why it cannot uh, conduct electricity. To conduct electricity, these ones have to have mobile ions. And so if we talk about that, that is worth one point. Part B, the student places excess calcium sulfate in a beaker containing 100 milliliters of water and places excess lead sulfate in another beaker containing 100 milliliters of water. The student stirs the contents of the beaker and then measures the electrical conductivity of the solution in each beaker. The student observes that the conductivity of the solution in beaker containing the calcium sulfate is higher than the conductivity of the solution in the beaker containing lead sulfate. In which compound, which compound is more soluble than water, the calcium sulfate or the lead sulfate? Justify your answer based on the results of the conductivity test. Well, the more uh, soluble is calcium sulfate. is that in order for the solution to conduct, it has to have mobile ions. So the uh, calcium sulfate solution has more mobile ions because more of the solid has dissolved and dissociated and the dissolvement associated means that it breaks up into ions. We have more ions in the solution because the calcium sulfate is more soluble. And getting to this point, that's worth one point. The left side of the diagram below shows a particulate representation of the contents of the beaker containing the calcium sulfate solid from the solution conductivity experiment. Now draw a particulate representation of the lead sulfate and the ions dissolved in the solution in the beaker on the right in the diagram. Draw the particles to look like those shown on the right of the beaker. Okay, draw an appropriate number of dissolved ions relative to the number of dissolved ions in the beaker on the left. So we have these ones on the left. You have, should have the same number of ions altogether. Okay, but here with the lead uh, sulfate, I'm gonna start by drawing the same picture as far as the solid is concerned. Now for the other six, I'm gonna add four of them here to the solid. And just have two more that are still in solution. Okay, this one here had lower conductivity because there are fewer ions floating around in solution, fewer mobile ions. Okay, here it had higher conductivity because it had more mobile ions. So this is the way I'm gonna draw my picture. And if I do that, I'm gonna get one point. Letter D, the student attempts to increase the solubility of calcium sulfite by adding 10 milliliters of two molar H2SO4 hydrogen sulfate Okay, that's the uh, sulfuric acid, to the beaker and observes the additional precipitate forms in the beaker. Explain this observation. Well, calcium sulfate dissolves and dissociates, okay, and that is an equilibrium. So these break up into ions, and the ions also go back to form the solid. So they break up and they reform, they go back and back and forth and back and forth. So that's an equilibrium. If we're gonna add more of the sulfate, 
what we do here with the hydrogen, uh, the sulfuric acid. We're adding hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions. The hydrogen ions don't have anything to do with this equilibrium, but we are adding the common ions, sulfate. So if we have more and more sulfate, that's going to cause our reaction to shift, the equilibrium to shift back to the product, which is the precipitate. So we're going to make more of the calcium sulfate precipitate. Another way to look at this mathematically is the idea that uh, if we were to draw the equilibrium expression for this would be Ksp, and that's going to be the concentration of calcium ion aqueous times the concentration of sulfate ion. And there would be some number associated with it, pretty small, because uh, calcium sulfate is not all that soluble. But if we were to add more hydrogen sulfate, okay, the sulfuric acid, then this number here is going to get larger than the calcium ion concentration. And in this case, since we're not at equilibrium anymore because we just upset that equilibrium by adding the uh, sulfuric acid, then we're going to call this Q. And we can see what's going to happen here is that because the sulfate is larger, then our Q is going to be greater than the K. And if Q is greater than K, the reaction is going to shift back towards the reactants in order to reduce the size of these two until it matches what the equilibrium value was. And so there's two different ways of talking about the same thing. But it's an equilibrium. The reaction is going to shift back to the left. And when we talk about that, we earn one point. So this is a four-point problem. Question number six.